Can I please have a few minutes of your time? I would like to help you. I would like to help you to become better at taking responsibility. Take your responsibility by becoming able to respond. And when I'm talking about becoming able to respond, I'm thinking about a specific group of people. People with special needs, as we as the general public would like to call them. But I think you could also use these advices for other groups of people. If at least you think in groups and if you think in people being black or white or in whatever group they are. I think of all people being very valuable and I want to honor them and I want to affirm their value and I would like to help you to do the same. So first of all I would like to read with you a passage from the Bible. Maybe you're familiar with the Bible, maybe you're not. Let me introduce you to a part. It's written by Paul, an apostle, a teacher, and he writes first in his letter to the Corinthians about love and about the spiritual and about the spiritual gifts. And then he continues about the spiritual and how we speak with one another and how we communicate when we're in community. Undoubtedly, there are all sorts of languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning. If then I do not grasp the meaning of what someone is saying, I am a foreigner to that person or to the speaker, and he is a foreigner to me. So it is with you. Since you are eager to have spiritual gifts, try to excel in the gifts that build up the church. And in another translation, it is written, Now become even more passionate about the things that strengthen the entire church, the entire community. But for now, I would like to talk with you about some thoughts that I have with this specific verse and the specific group that I just mentioned, the people with special needs. Because there's a beautiful group of people and they have different ways of speaking. Did you know, by the way, that there is about 7,000 languages that are spoken in the world as of today? It might be more, it might be less, and it depends on what you count, whether you take dialects as being a part of a language or whether you would count them separate. But there's many, many languages. And then that doesn't even count the people that use sign languages, that use their hands to communicate because they're deaf or just because their voice is not the best way to communicate. Or the best or the easiest way to communicate. And for those who don't speak in spoken word nor use sign language, there is other ways of communication. They can use computers like maybe Stephen Hawking and if you're from England you might have seen the Lost Voice guy on British Got Talent in 2018. He used a computer. Lee communicated with his computer and was incredibly funny. But Still, I wonder how many people would be willing and able and daring, maybe. What a funny thing. Would you be daring to talk with him? I think there's many of us that don't feel comfortable just because we don't know how to communicate, how to respond to a person that communicates in a different way, that uses a different language, that has a different cultural background, or just looks a little different than we do. How do we communicate with them and how do we start? Where do we start to quit being strangers, to quit being foreigners for each other, but start communicating with each other. I would like to help you to stop being foreigners for each other and to start, to start building relationship and to start to connect. A good book that I read about this topic is this book, written by Denny Silk, Keep Your Love On. Because love is a choice. We can choose to become better at responding at people. And he writes, responding does not come naturally. He takes a difference between reacting and responding. The reaction is the thing that you do naturally, and a response would be something that you think about, that you train. You can you train yourself to become a better responder. And that's what I would like to help you with in this video. So what can you do and how can you respond in a different way? There's five things that I would like to suggest. First of all, be a friend. Be a friend and ask, help them to figure out what activities work best for them. Because some activities are just not as easy. When you have a kid that's in a wheelchair or a kid that has autism and is very respons responsive to all kinds of sensory information, just ask what could be an activity that you would like to participate in and what can we do together to have fun 
and build our friendship and continue our friendship as a family, as a whole. And what can we do to help you take care of your children and take care of your family? And that brings me to my second tip. That would be bring food. Offer to bring food or offer other practical support. And if you're a parent and you're watching this video, I know that you can do it on all on your own and I don't want to um, dishonor you in any way because I'm very proud of you for what you're doing. But I think we can also ask for other people to help us. You can ask for people around you to help you and maybe you already have people that help you. Great. Keep going and keep sharing the importance of asking for help because we want to be friends and we want to help you. And the third thing would be that we consider this kid as a gift. The kid is just as special and just as gifted any other child that is born. The kid is not the condition. The kid is not the Down syndrome. The kid is not the cerebral palsy. The kid is not the autism. It is the kid with a name. The person has a name and that name gives that person their identity. That determines who this individual is, not the diagnosis that a medical professional has put on their file. So the fourth thing would be greet the child. Make eye contact. Greet the child and be genuine. Thank you. And if you feel uncomfortable, number five, that would be to talk with the parents most likely not when the kid is around and just ask them, hey, I really wanted to say goodbye or I really wanted to say hello to your child this, this moment or that moment that we saw each other. I just really felt uncomfortable and I'm sorry about that, but could you help me? How could I better say hello next time or how could I better greet them next time? Could you give me some advice? And then for now, I would like to return to a passage from the Bible. Because if you read in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 10 to 12, that's the verse that I just read at the beginning of this video, then continue to verse 19, and there Paul even gives some advice. In the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than a thousand words in a tongue. So, not about speaking different languages, not about making it complicated or speaking in tongues, but just five plain words. So, with that, I would like to ask you and invite you into a declaration that the next time you will greet a person and you will just simply say, hey, add in their name, and then how are you? That would be five words. Five words, as Paul describes, to encourage this other person and just make them part of the family. Please say after me. The next time I see a child or a person with special needs, I will take responsibility to build up one of the members of the church. I will greet them. I will use five words. I will say, hey, add in their name, how are you? That's not that hard. You can do it. You can greet this person. And as I said in the very beginning, you might even be able to use this with other groups of people. People that have a different background than you are. The first thing you can say is just simply, hey, how are you? I would like to get to know you. Good luck with being more responsible.